<laughs> good to go. Yay. Okay. So we are here today with Joan of Angels calling in from London, and we're very excited to speak with you, Joan. And next to me, I have Ginger, who's an amazing intuitive and a dear friend here in Taos and part of our little tribe, um, ever-growing tribe. And uh, it's an exciting moment, isn't it? There is a lot happening on the planet. And yeah, I guess I kind of wanted to start out, Joan, just asking you about how, how did you get started on this whole thing? God, okay, that's a great question. <laughs> you just want me to drop right in. Yeah. So I began <laughs> my journey into spirituality when I when I became a chiropractor. And actually before that, I, I moved to L.A. to move into an ashram, a spiritual community, when I was 25. And as I developed in that community... I also realized, oh, my God, I could become a chiropractor. But I went to an event one night and I said, OK, God, what should I do with my life? And I actually heard a voice that said, go to chiropractic school. I and mean, it was very clear. Wow. And the next day I went and I enrolled. And when I got home that day, there was a check for the whole total amount of the tuition from my grandfather's estate waiting for me. Wow. As a confirmation. You know, so periodically I had always heard voices guiding me. But I went on to become a chiropractor and I discovered healing. You know, I discovered that I could heal people with my hands. And and I learned very young. I went to a visioning workshop and said, well, what am I supposed to you know, do this life? And they showed me a vision of the Colosseum, the Greek Colosseum. And millions of people were coming by in front of me in wheelchair, wheelchairs and crutches and crawling and this golden white light angelic goddess was behind me and I was dressed like an angelic goddess and together we were just we were just healing the people and they were walking by us dropping their crutches and wheelchairs and walking off and I knew at that moment I was here to heal and inspire millions of people across the planet so that began my journey and I became a chiropractor and I became very frustrated with doing one person at a time I was constantly trying to figure out how can I mass adjust, you know, 10 people, 20 people, 1,000 people, you know, in one session. It became very frustrating one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of interesting. But I went on to then go through massive shifts and began to realize that I was an intuitive and start doing readings for everyone I knew. And I thought I was good at it because I knew them. So I, I sent myself to Costa Rica on an adventure because I had property there. And I said, I'm going to do readings in a cafe where I'm blind and I don't know the people. And I put up a little sign, $15 for 15 minutes. And people at the restaurant kept coming up to me. And, and I learned that I did have a gift. And it wasn't just because I knew the people. And I had many miracles that happened. And I ultimately ultimately started writing books on miracles. I formed a group with my kids called the Miracle Makers Club. Wow. So I was always circling around this concept of miracles and angels and the divine. And I'm here to help people experience miracles in their life and healing in their body, mind, and spirit and help turn their power on. And I did that as a chiropractor. And I do that even as a oracle and as a, an advisor, spiritual advisor and intuitive. I help people turn on their innate power, their innate gifts, their innate light, and help them remember who they are. And I guess I've been doing it many lifetimes, not just, you know, I laughed when I told you how long, don't say it though, but, but many lifetimes, you know, millions of years, probably thousands of years. And I remember doing it now as a priestess and an Egyptian and yeah, I've been doing it all my lifetimes even. Wow. Amazing. Well, thank you for all that work here on the planet. You know, I was just saying before we hopped on here, I'm sure we'd be on a different timeline without your service. And, you know, it, it really, it takes all of us, right? Doing our little thing. And it yeah. takes all of us to do our thing. And, you know, helping people is not work. It's what I live for. You know, it's the bliss I, I live, the, the aha moments like we're going to have on the show here. I just live for that. And it's not work at all. It's it's what gives me my bliss. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, 
How do you feel? What if I asked you to share maybe some of maybe a single most remarkable experience of your communication with angels and and how that you know how that first maybe came in and then if there was one moment where you just went into an altered state and had a whole experience, I would love to know what that's looked like. Well, okay, so I've had several experiences like that, but. Really what was profound was in October, Halloween 2013, and I was at a very low point. I was not feeling miraculous. I was feeling more like a failure. I was suddenly destitute. I had nothing. And and I, you know, just begged the universe for help. It's like, oh my God, how do I get back to that miracle feeling that, you know, creating miracles for people? And, you know, how can I, how can I get back there? And And I heard this voice, it said, well, paint 33 angels in 30 days. Now, I said, the the logical mind in me said, well, that's ridiculous. 30, you know, 30 paintings, all these canvases that, you know, it's going to smell all the oil. It was like, there's no way I can do it. And that was kind of interesting. And then I heard the voice again, paint 33 angels in 30 days. And then I said, well, I, you know, I, you know, I don't do faces or noses or eyes or anything like that. And, you know, I was trying to get out of it. And then I heard the voice a third time. God, and that's three rings here. I heard the voice a third time, <laughs> right? So nothing can be more of a confirmation than that. Mm-hmm. And at this time I knew that either I said yes or they won't be asking again. You know, I had been begging for help. And, you know, help doesn't come, you know, it's not like the angels were going to call me and say, now, Joan, turn right down that street. It's going to happen that way. They were answering my call. And I was like saying, um, you know, all these ridiculous reasons. And and they they explained to me that that. So I knew that they were answering my call. Let's put it that way. And I knew that they wouldn't ask again. It's like three times and you're out. I also knew that they had asked many, many people and that, you know, if I was to say yes, it, like I would step into a new place. Mm-hmm. And so I said yes. And as I painted all those angels for 30 days, I was in a transformed state. I was painting with the canvas upside down. I was painting with my eyes closed. I was just in bliss, channeling the divine. And they called themselves these earth messenger beings. They had asked me to be a paintbrush for them. They they explained to me that this was so humanity could see what they look like because they don't always have wings. They don't always look like angels. My art was kind of, you know, unique anyway. And so I did that for 30 days. And then I hung every every piece of painting on the wall. I lived in a in a penthouse and it was on the it was on the um so I called it the angel loft. I just created an angel loft. And a book fell off the bookshelf and it fell onto the floor, opened up to this page that said, your call for divine assistance has been heard. And that caused chills. Okay, your call for divine assistance has been heard. And then a few days later, you know, the book fell off again. Not, I don't know why, but it fell off again. And this time it was to be one of the chosen ones you must choose. And that was very powerful and profound to be one of the chosen ones. In other words, to be a leader, to be an avatar, to to really do that work I had envisioned when I was younger, I had to say yes. You know, I had to say yes to the call. And and that became a big turning point in my life to say yes. And, And then I said to them, well, what am I supposed to do with all this art? You know, it's a lot of art, guys, here on the physical planet. (laughs) <laughs> and their answer was because they were in symbols then paint us and we will come it's like well who's going to come and then I started painting these very large beings who told me they were earth messenger beings and they came to me they gave me messages they painted through me and and ultimately I was told to move to the desert so I could hear better and I actually stayed in the desert for seven years until a year ago when I put everything in storage and moved out. But but they came to me. They told me to come to the desert. And the second day I was here, 
I was in a restaurant meeting someone who lived in the local desert. And she says to me, well, what did you say your name was again? You know, and I started to say, well, Dr. Joan Hangarter, my chiropractic name, my legal name. And she goes like this, stop. And the restaurant went completely silent. Time stood still. I was in a vacuum and she said, I know who you are. She said it very powerfully. I know who you are. Well, that's how I heard it. And she said, you're Joan of angels. And so for the next seven years, which was good, I was in the desert. I, I learned to step into what that really meant and the energy of that. And so I became named and I had always wanted to know what name I really had. I didn't like, you know, my other name, Joan Hangarter. And now I became Joan of Angels. It took me seven years to step into that. Wow. Wow. I'm not disappointed. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for sharing. My God. Um, so you've been at this for a long time, huh? And I won't disclose. I said I wouldn't tell anyone, right? So um, let's just say a long time. But I'm curious, you know, what what does it look like from your perspective? How, the, the outer world, the shifts that are taking place, new beings coming online, new accesses coming in, new internal activations. I'm curious, I mean, you've been here to see this process through, right? And it, it, it feels painfully slow and sometimes too fast all at the same time, if you can relate. And I'm just curious, you know, where, where do you think we're at in that process? What a great question. We are actually in the great awakening, but to get there, we're in the great ending of a cycle of control of what I call evil of, of, you know, suppressing humanity, suppressing humanity's gifts through food, water, school, teachings, um, pharmaceuticals, all those things that we know. I won't say those words, but all those things we know that are here to suppress humanity and to really turn us into chronically ill, subservient beings. And through my chiropractic years, I really moved away from pharmaceuticals and really stepped into natural healing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do those things to my kids. My kids were never on antibiotics until they left home, basically. Lucky kids, and, huh? Oh, well... well <laughs> They thought they were weird at the time, but now I realize they wanted to stay healthy as I watched kids deteriorate into chronic illness. So my first real wake up call about what was happening in the world came through my background as a chiropractor. And, you know, it's sad to say because there, there's been two tracks of people. There's those who are waking up to who they can be and their full potential and the need for freedom and the need for for a different planet, for a different life, to be able to step into a fifth dimensional consciousness. And then there are those who are firmly entrenched in their three dimensional ways. Like I call it the difference between the magical people and the muggles. So I brought my son up on, on Harry Potter to all the magical people. And so let's say that there's the magical people who are waking up and remembering and calling forth their power, like the, the two of you, and, and really waking up younger than people like me because, because you're already, there's already an opening for you. So the younger generation, your generation and probably the new one coming in are smarter, they're faster, they're, they're the ones that are become awake are more aligned. They're, they're more connected to their galactic self and they see, they see the gal galactic beings, they see the angels. And so there's a whole tribe of young ones coming in that are very, very, very advanced and very connected in this, in this dimensional, interdimensional world, and they know the truth. But there's also that generation that's completely brainwashed and completely suppressed. And when I look at their auric field, they're surrounded like in a black, um, there's, there's a chemical, I finally discovered what it is. I can't remember. It'll come to me halfway through this interview, but, but and maybe Ginger sees it. When I look with my inner sight, 
I see a lot of those muggles encased in black and in black, like almost like they're in a coffin. And this, this black stuff is becoming harder and harder and harder around them. And so people say, well, why aren't they listening? Well, they can't. They're actually entrapped because of their own soul purpose and their own soul decisions. They're trapped and they can't get out of it. And so they're, they're just like programmed. They're programmed. Program. And they continue with the program. And you know, you, you can tell them because you say one thing, you know, that they might not like, and they just come at you with all their programming. And and I, I think that the world is going to be divided. I think there's those of us who are on that ascension path who will ascend, as well as those who are on this earthly path who may be coming back, you know, another thousand years until they're ready to say yes. And so the key is, is the people who are ready to say yes, yes to my destiny, yes to my ultimate soul purpose, yes to remembering who I am, yes to carrying the light, and and yes to saying no to that which doesn't work for me, that which you know violates my sovereignty, that which takes away my power. And so people are every day, one of the beauties of what happened since 2020 is more people are kind of waking up. <laughs> I, I have a dear friend who is totally a muggle, and, and her daughter was injured a few years ago severely and hasn't recovered, went numb through her legs and still has never recovered. And at first she would say, oh, it's a good thing they did that. Okay. And she was very protective of it, but she started researching and now she's awake. Now she may not be awake to the angelic realms, but she's awake to the fact that there is something going on in the planet. And, and I've been doing a lot of research on this, uh, on all the, the global resets that we've had, where they've destroyed humanity. Maybe humanity got too smart and they took us out over and over and over again. Just, just like that movie Groundhog's Day, you know, he wakes up, he has the same memory every day. We're actually repeating cycles of time. The last one was, was with that Spanish flu. Yeah. You know, a hundred some odd years ago where millions and millions and millions of people died because of right. and that. Right. So you can tell how cryptic I'm being, but those were <laughs> nice. yeah, I, I'm assuming perfect. the yeah. audience will completely understand what we're talking about. But but I have deep feelings now about the planet. And I do believe that more and more of us are awakening on this timeline of ascension. And that that which we've been seeing, that the, this planet unfolding, this planet stepping into the new earth is going to happen. And mainly because of you and your generation, too. Like, we held the space, but you're going to be doing the work. And that's my, my five-minute summary. <laughs> well, that was pretty succinct, Joan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is 100% in alignment, I would say, with what we've been perceiving, Ginger. And it's interesting when you talk about the field that way, kind of being clouded, that blackness. One of the big epiphanies for me over the past year has been that the matrix, as, as we call it, this system of control and soul recycling grid and on and on, you could talk about it forever, whatever it is. We, we refer to it as just the inversion, I think, for the most part. Oh, but that's a nice, if, a great way to talk about it. Yeah, and yeah. You can find it for everyone and for me. Yeah. Inversion. Okay, I like it's that. Like a, it's a nice way of summarizing it because you see it's upside down land, right? And you're like, why is everything backwards here? And you, uh, in, in yeah. the awakening process, it can be a right. long, long ways of like, oh, and that's backwards and that's backwards and that's backwards. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's all backwards, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's all backwards. And, you know, it's all a lie. It's just mm -hmm. all a lie, which is pretty interesting. You know, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I started to wake up to the fact that the food was poisoning us. The, medic the medication, the medical care was killing us. Mm -hmm. The water was killing us. The toxins in the in the detergents and in everything in the home were killing us. The clothing was killing us. And what and then I sat down one day and it was like, well, they must be trying to create the planet for beings that could live in this kind of toxic environment, not for humans. And that was another epiphany, because when you realize that everything is against us, but it must be for there, there, 
all those other elite beings can manage it because maybe they're not quite human. Maybe those are the reptilians we're talking about. Well, I know that they are. They are the controllers and they invaded our planet about a thousand years ago and destroyed it from the inside out and created, you know, Africa was once fertile. Now it's a desert. Antarctica was once beautiful and a center of love and light. And now, you know, we're not even allowed to go there because of what we're going to find there. And, and those, they put those ice walls on it to prevent us from seeing all the continents that lay beyond the ice wall. Mm -hmm. So I do have strong opinions about everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not so much opinions, right? I mean, you're, you're seeing, you're seeing the, the reality and then the overlay. And so again, you know, when we're talking about the matrix or the inversion, it's, it's created this overlay on a very real living planet. And this planet is a gem in the cosmos. It's absolutely precious. It's a storehouse for so many light codes and, you know, DNA storehouse and information from everywhere in, in, in the living universe right here on Earth. And so, you know, even before you get into reptilians, there's a long, long history, right, of galactic wars and attempts to control this place. And what I see, I, I refer to it as, as the synthetic timeline, where there's this artificial intelligence and this entire control matrix that has been the source of massive wars, like the Orion Wars, for example. And it's always operated through organic beings. So they hijack our biology by putting nanotech or different things in our system, and then they run these overlays, you know? And so we we create the matrix if that makes sense and until we step out of creating the matrix and we step into our true power and we enter our crystalline channel and we start to translate through our divine encodement and drop that onto the planet and anchor those frequencies onto the earth and it's an intense realization to look around us and see that human beings, we, we need to step into our power and our creation frequency because until we do so, we continue this loop. And, and, and that loop that you're describing, yeah, it, it has different contexts over, you know, over the years, you'll see it expressed in this way and that way and this way and that way, but they've taken it out of the spiral of creation and they've made it into a circle. And that's when we hear uh, if you've ever heard of like Ouroboros or something, right? The snake eating its own tail. It's this never ending circle or in, in the Don Juan material, he talks about um, the eagle and it's the same thing. It's just this endless cycle. And it's, it's an energy harvesting apparatus at the end of the day. And it's falling apart right now, right? Like it's breaking down and we're doing it and we're, <laughs> we're bringing the, the spiral of creation back in. And so it's a magical moment. And, you know, when I when I say thank you, like to yourself or to Ginger, you you guys have prepared this space now for beings who are encoded with creation frequencies to drop in here and actually translate that into our physical waking reality. And that process is now underway. And it's pretty exciting in even in the context of all the destruction we see in the world. You know, it's amazing, miraculous moment. What do you think, Ginger? Uh, well, yes to everything. You know, you you were t you were talking about before. You know, how do you, how how do you get to those who um, may want to step out of this? And it's a uh, as, as you know, because you work with individ individuals as well as working with. Um, groups probably and in all the ways you work. I love sitting in a session with an individual and my primary objective is to reflect back to them who they really are. Their divine, as Zane would say, their divine blueprint. What I find, and I'm imagining you have the same similar type of experiences, when you do that for someone, even if it's a glimpse that they can get of who they really are, there's this spark that happens within them. Now, ultimately it is up to 
every person to then grab onto that and build from there. But to to be able to reflect back who someone really is and not the overlays of distortion and who they may, their story, their their woundedness, their this and that. A lot of times when I'm in session with somebody, I just fast track past that. If somebody goes into their story, I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, okay. Now let me tell you who I really see. Let me tell you who you really are. And, And a lot of times that can be for what they're here to do because that is the most often question I'm asked when someone sits down with me. What am I here for? which then leads me to what I um, uh, believe is that every human being, ultimately their greatest priority is their contribution. Yes, it's your purpose, but it's your contribution. And when you start speaking to someone like that, it's like things light up in them. Their spirit, their soul lights up. So I'm all about how do we take that? How do we light that up in individuals, in groups, even by our example and model it for them? Because that's also a way for them to step into their creative selves, their creator beings as we all are. And then they're like, I like that. And I always give people a... you know, practical ways to approach that because people need those practical ways as well. Sometimes talking in the etheric and, you know, even if you start talking about the ascension with some people, you know, I'm I'm sure you've experienced this, Joan. You, You can start to lose some people when you start going into those bigger realms. I try and make information accessible and approachable. That's why I love having these conversations with others. Um, And I've done a little bit of uh, what I've visioned for 20 plus years, conversation circles, where using the Socratic method, which is simply inquiring and discussing things, not debating things, not getting to an end goal about things, but just talking about things, that to me also infuses that creation, that creator beingness that we have in all of us. And we're all figuring this out together. So it's, um, yeah, it's an extraordinary moment to find all the different ways that we can, um, you know, keep sparking and lighting the fire and fanning the flames and keeping it going and, and also having fun with it too. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing. We we come down here, we sort of we have our mission, you know, we actually I tell people you have a clipboard, it has everything you're supposed to do on it, but you land down here and the rules change every time you get back here. The history <laughs> changes, the timeline changes. Uh all these beings are here to make sure you don't achieve your vision and dream. And you face hardships down here from the moment you get here for most people all designed to really make sure you don't remember who you are and why you're here, or even that you have special gifts that you're really a master. So for many of us, I can tell you that, you know, I've been told I'm a 33 aspect walk-in because I I know I'm a walk-in. I'm not the same person I was, but, but I couldn't identify when it came in. Well, that's because my hardships were so hard that it took 32 32 bolts of lightning, basically, to bring me back together. So it's not always a simple task for people, this art of remembering. But the biggest thing is, is if you can just stay, remember that you're a being of light, that you're here to hold the light no matter what. You know, if you're drowning, hold the light. If you're, if you're out in the supermarket, hold the light. And, and that's the first step towards actually being in your mission and your purpose, your soul purpose, because we're really here to hold the light. And, and we do that as we awaken, we do it even stronger. So now that I'm untethered from the desert, my, my last aspect has come in fully and I have this sense of completion and wholeness and, and you know, this, this light that's truly amazing. 
And, you know, when I work with people, that's what we go for. It's like, why are you here? What's your what's your sole purpose? How do we remove those obstacles you're facing now? And I, I like to take my clients up to the mountaintop with me. I don't know, all the way up there. And there's a little coffee house, a little cafe. It's, you know, the Joan of Angels Cafe. We're having our favorite tea. And we're looking down here on the planet. And so we have a better perspective. And in front of us, we see a road. You know, it's just that road of life. And and everything I, we kind of couch as roundabouts, like people or situations keeping us trapped in this circle that we go round and round and round and round and round until we actually break free from it. So it's an interesting perspective. But, you know, I one of the things that I do now is I do what I call soul essence portraits. And that is a deep dive into who you are on this amazing canvas that you can never forget how powerful you are. Because even those of us who have these gifts can forget very easily. Look, you go to the supermarket, you could be whacked on the head by, you know, the last people who are fighting. And, you know, the energy in the world is crazy. I'm traveling all around the world. I can tell you that either they're they're asleep and they're just acting like nothing is happening, which is also crazy. But but it's it's hard. It's it's hard for intuitives and empaths to be out in the world for sensitives because the planet is a crazy place. So learning how to protect yourself is also important. So I do these soul essence portraits where we really look at who you are and this art is an activation. So I'm an activator. If you want to know, I was told recently by my dear friend, Carolyn Ford, who is a skull keeper for Einstein at a session with her. And she said, well, Joan, you have this genetic mutation. I thought she said defect, but she said, you have this genetic mutation (laughs) that no one else on the planet has. You're one of a kind. And it's the ability to not only wake up people, but infuse them with the sense that they can step into their power, the sense that miracles can happen for them, their sense of, um, I know who, who I am. And so I'm infectious that way. When people come in my field, they believe that they can make it. It doesn't matter how depressed they were, they get a sense of, okay, I'm gonna be able to get through this. Okay, it's I'm, I'm bigger than I think. Or, And it is just a gift I've had my entire life, only I didn't know how to use it. You know, I taught classes on miracles. I wrote books on miracles. You know, I've always been into miracles, into that sense of wonder and that sense of achieving, of stepping into the impossible and stepping into mastery of your gifts. I teach classes on intuition, how to master your your superpowers. So I think, and I do, do truly feel like I carry such a ray of light sometimes that, that it spreads out and it uplifts wherever I go. I don't even have to say a word sometimes when I go places. People want to know what energy I'm carrying. And it's and it's cultivated. I teach people how to fluff your wings. You know, fluffing your wings is if you go out in the world with your wings fluffed and you're literally feeling them, people really, you know, changes the energy in the supermarket wherever you go it just has to because you're carrying that light and that light transforms everything and we're all capable of that i'm not the only undercover angel who's gone public on the planet (laughs) oh my god i mean there's so many right that's that's been kind of a cool realization lately is like you know the starseed initiative i i think in its original conception it was honestly a little bit of a crazy idea like could we get one of these higher dimensional beings through all of these control apparatuses, have them drop in, land in a body, and still wake up and remember in the heart of that density? You know, you're like, could we really pull that off? You know, and now here we are like hundreds of millions, right? (laughs) Blow me away. I I didn't think of it like that. But yes, yes, yes. And there's millions of star seeds. There's millions of undercover angels out there too, you know, that they're, they're on the same vibration here to mass awaken the people, but also to develop their own connection to, to spirit and to their guides and to their starseed family. Mm-hmm. And that's the most important thing to bring in your own messages, your own channeling. And, you know, I've heard it say that the ETs are not out there, they're in here. 
<laughs> the outside is not outside. It's actually in your visions and in your own your own universe. So we are a complete universe ourselves. And the more we connect to that, the more we're in another dimension. But it's not like even a physical dimension because it's in our, you know, it's not like we're physically in that other dimension, but we create it because we're in our head with it. We're in our own visions with it. So it's quite a spectacular mechanism of awakening. It's not the outer awakening at all. It's in a whole inner process that the star seeds and your generation are catching on like this. I mean, like wildfire. And I work with a lot of star seeds. You know, I work with a group. I'm an executive producer for Portal to Ascension. And actually, we have a, a star beings conference coming up in January. So we work with a lot of star seeds, a lot of hybrids, a lot of ETs, a lot of walk ins. But people who really remember that they have learned how to connect to these higher beings. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I don't, I don't want to insert myself again, Ginger. Yeah, if you, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, the, the way I've seen that translate is, you know, as a multidimensional being out of time, we exist in all of these different systems throughout the cosmos. Right. And so let's say we've had a whole series of lifetimes on Sirius and Arcturus and Pleiades or, you know, wherever, just to use some of the, the well-known ones. And we live there and we have lifetimes and we get encoded on each of those planets. Well, the initiative now to bring all these beings to Earth is to seed galactic codes from all over the universe here onto the planet and to reawaken that library, that incredible storehouse. When we activate and we connect to that library, then we can bring those frequencies back up into creation that have been suppressed by this matrix for a very long time. And so we, we named our, our channel or whatever you want to call it, New Octave Rising. I, what I've seen in, in, in my internal visioning is that when every single being on planet Earth steps into their godhood, and they remember the full greatness of their being, how, how massive we are, you know, because it, like, I, I can be like, oh yeah, I've done some cool stuff. I have some cool experiences, multi-dimensional aspects that are really big and really powerful. But even that is just a sliver, right? I'm talking about stepping all the way into it. And when you have however many billions of beings awaken on this planet, particularly, it's gonna create a standing wave across the whole universe and it shifts the whole universe up an octave in frequency. So that's what's right. coming. I think you're right. And so, you know, one, you're one of those beings. So I don't know, it was, I, I had a group in Baja years ago. I had moved to Baja and I started a group called Baja Paranormal, which was for, mostly for people who had ET encounters. And when I left Baja, oh, and every day there were these saucer ships, these saucer clouds, you know, above my head. And I remember I'd wake up in the morning having dreams of going up a, a spaceship that would be outside my door. And I had a regression about it a year or two later. I said, well, what was all of that about? And in the regression, I found myself on a, one of those saucer ships, which I knew then was connected to a mother ship that was far up there. And everyone in my Baja paranormal group was on the ship and they were like this, they were passed out. They were just like sitting like that with their eyes closed and still. But I was up on the podium and on the podium, there was a chair and, and one at a time, people would come and sit in the chair and I would connect them to the light. So I, I literally would tune up their antenna that went all the way up to the light. Now, the funny part about it is that every time I used to adjust a patient, I'd say, we've turned on your power. And even now as an oracle, when I'm done, I say, we turn on your power. So I've been doing this for centuries. But they said to me on the ship, they said, you made an agreement that you would not leave until every soul on the planet was vibrationally aligned, was tuned up. So you have billions of people waiting to go up and do this. And I said to the being, I said, oh my God, that's billions of people. It's going to take forever. And the next thing I know, several helpers, people that I had known who do massive work, work with massive amounts of people were on board the ship. So what they were saying to me, it wasn't just me. It was going to be a massive group of souls like both of you 
that are octave rising, that are continually now, all of us together, waking up every soul on the planet. So not one soul shall be lost. And that's important to know, not one soul on this planet will, will be lost. Now, they may not awaken at this moment, but the frequencies on this planet are going higher and it will take them with them, take it will take everyone with them to a certain point. And if they end up back in that wheel of reincarnation for another thousand years, they will be at a higher point just by having survived what we're doing here. Now, that doesn't mean I'm hanging out for that other thousand years. For all of them, I'm going to do it from up above down. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Can you please stick around? <laughs> You know, I'm very grateful because I've been told I was gonna I was gonna really live my bliss, and I am. The awakening that I'm having now, since I left the desert, it's like I, I'm a woman unleashed. And my memories of being the high priestess in Atlantis and watching it drown, and my memories of being Hathor, and even Cleopatra in Egypt, and being the mother of the pharaohs. You know, I was the mother of many beings. Um, this lifetime, I was the mother of many avatars. And as these memories come through for me, my awakening gets even stronger. And then the work I do is so much more empowering. Like next week in Glastonbury, all of this comes together in my presentation of waking everyone else up. Because my role was connecting the earth and the heavens. I would walk the earth and the heavens and talk to the gods many lifetimes. I mean, over and over and over again. And that's what I'm waking people up to now, that they too have this power to activate and, and be who they are. So it's an exciting time. I agree. <laughs> what do you got, Ginger? <laughs> well, I wanted to go back to what you said um, earlier, Joan, because I think it's uh, a really important point to bring across to people who are listening to these kind of things and looking at this kind of material. There's so much material out there now. And I feel like sometimes people get may get, some may get a little overwhelmed with, well, there are all these people out there doing all this amazing work and it's just little old me. How do I even step into this? The good news is for all of you out there that may be listening and feeling that way is you've already stepped into it by choosing to listen to things like this and start exploring. The thing that you brought up earlier, which I think is very important, in order to be one of the chosen ones, you have to choose. And I think that's an important point to bring across to people like, well, where do I begin? How do I start? Choose. Mm -hmm. And what I say to people all the time is if, if you are in that place along your own journey and you're lost, there's a very simple prayer and it's two words, show me. And then add what it is you want to be shown. And then, of course, there are many ways that we can um, explain to people what their particular way of listening is and getting that information. And sometimes it's stumbling along the way, but you have to choose. You have to, it's, it's almost like making a declaration. It's... Uh, it's claiming your life and your existence here, which, funny enough, a lot of people haven't even claimed their life. Claim your life. Claim what you know is some purpose and contribution out there, and then leave yourself open to be shown. So I think that's an important piece for people to start with when they may feel like, I don't know where to begin in all of this. Or maybe there are people that have reached a point where they've hit that brick wall. And it's like, well, like you were explaining before, it's funny you mentioned 2013, because 2013 was pretty rough one for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there must have been something going on energetically in 2013. Um, but maybe you've hit that place where it's like, okay, I thought I was doing great here and I was on a roll and then boom, it's the same thing. Choose again, step into another level of, um, being, asking to be shown, show me, show me, show me. You know, I, I love how you're, I would call you the practical intuitive. Right? <laughs> I so the agree. Pragmatic, the pragmatic intuitive, because you have such pragmatic <laughs> advice. I, I'll show, you know, the first, first of all, there's a lot of intuitives. There's a lot of guides out there that are ready to help anyone, but you have to hear the resonance and life is all about resonance. And often when you hit the brick wall, it's because your life is not in resonance. But, but you made me think of something that I used to say. I, I used to tell people that once I realized there was a spiritual awakening and, you know, I want to, I don't want to come back and I want to get it all now. I was like a type A was like a type A behavior. I'm going to get all I can and go as fast as I can and elbow people out of the way so I get to the top, you know, because I'm a, I was a type A. And then and then I heard this tape one day and and the speaker was saying, you know, you're in the exact right spot that you're supposed to be in. You're you're on your destiny already. You're in the most perfect spot for you. So if you hit that brick wall, that brick wall is meant to teach you that maybe it's time for you to walk around it or dissolve it. But but that was very profound because then I realized, oh, there's millions of people behind me, but there's millions of people on the side of me and there's millions of people in front of me. And it was all about my own pace. So you're in the exact right spot you're meant to be until in, as you're being shown the way to go. And I think that takes a lot of pressure off when people go, oh, I'm not as spiritual as I could be or should be. <laughs> there are no shoulds. You're, we're all waking up. It, it's, it, you know, some people wake up at birth. I, you know, some people wake up earlier. I'm telling you, I had to go through 32 activations through my life to actually get to where I am today. And, and that's a lot of activation. That's a lot of hard lessons to, to do that. So I don't want anyone to think, and I don't think Ginger wants anyone to think it's a piece of cake. And that those of us who are here talking about it have any you know magical wand or are better than you. We, we went through our own hard knocks. Ginger said 2013 hit knocked her over the head. You know, I was drowning. I was penniless in 2013. And a new friend of mine was, I walked into this penthouse, right? And my book was on the table of miracles. And she looked at me and a day or two later, she said, you know, I was really looking forward to meeting the author of this fantastic book. And I'm very disappointed to meet you. Very, because I was a mess, all yeah. right? So we get the lessons we need and then, and then a few weeks later, you know, the I heard the angels calling me. So, guys, don't think that that just because you're in a pickle right now or hard times, we too, all of us. I haven't asked Zane about it, but to get to where you're going, there's certain challenges. You know, in the old days, they went through initiations in the temples, and these initiations were hard. If you were born in a native environment, you went through grand initiations that were very hard tied in the forest and left overnight or but but that's part of life to help you build up your your tenacity you can either succumb and say you know what i'm going to stay on the dark side for the rest of my life it's easy and it is easier by the way it is it easier to you know ignore what we're doing and and go party with your friends or use drugs or whatever but but these lessons are coming and knocking you on the head so you have that wake-up call and you go, oh, you know, funny thing. I don't know if I'm in the right place right now. This doesn't feel good. And when you can have that aha moment, this doesn't feel right. Then you go, how do I find places and people and things or a job that resonates with me? I think that's a key, resonance. Who do you resonate with? Because there's people you're living with or talking to or working with that you aren't resonating with. And that is a wake up call too. once you can acknowledge, wow, I don't fit in here. I don't even want to fit in here. I don't feel good. I, I teach people when I do sessions about discernment. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and it's like on a scale of one to 10, how do you think you're going to feel? How, how do you feel when you're with these people? And it's like, well, God, I feel terrible when I'm with my boyfriend, literally feel worse <laughs> than who I met. I went out with him and it's like, huh, that's a key right there. If you go to a party and, and you feel out of sorts and it's like, wow, I, it didn't, it doesn't feel right to hang out with those people anymore. So I think what I'm saying, and maybe Ginger is saying is use your awareness because the answer is right in front of you. You hit that brick wall for a reason. Are you in a place you shouldn't be? Are you with people that are bringing you down miracle busters? I call them that are breaking your bubble that are, are hurting you and not helping you. Now that takes discernment guys that takes growing up that takes true acknowledgement to admit to yourself you're not in a life that that is supporting you because remember we're kind of trained to have a bad life of course you're not trained to have a good life (laughs) you don't even have the food and all the things you would need for a good life we're not given that necessarily You, you gotta like discover it for yourself like oh crap the water actually tastes bad or this food gives me a stomach ache. Like we, you have to like pay attention. I'll tell you an example. I, I had a boyfriend many years ago from the very beginning. I knew he wasn't right for me and I wanted the experience of this. However, it became a $500,000 loss for me. I almost lost my children. My children were injured in it. I was injured in it. And in the end, I had to say, I had to actually ask my kids to help me get out of this and call 911. It was so bad. And yet when I evaluated it, and this is a good thing to look at your relationships, it's like, when did you know that this wasn't the right person for you? Well, in a way, I kind of knew the first few weeks, but I, I somehow needed that experience. So... One of the things when I have clients that are in bad relationships, you know, or they're talking about the last one, a training uh, for your intuition is, well, when did you actually realize, like, not what you told yourself that it was going to be okay, but when did you actually know in your heart it wasn't going to work out? And most, at least women and men, actually knew in the beginning it wasn't the right person, but you're trying to make it work, make it work, you know, let's put it together. You know, and um, and that's a hard waking up to. You can avoid the dangers that the three of us might have had by by actually looking at it now. The sooner, the better. The sooner, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, I mean, don't, don't, you don't need thirty two <laughs> hard knock awakenings to get to your bliss. Well, and also, you know, to be fair with yourself, I mean, you guys came in at a very different point of density on the planet, you know, and and as we move up this this wave, I mean, it's lightning. So every new generation, as you said, they come into a existence where more of their light quotient can translate through and they can be more in yeah. tune with their they're dimensional. More they're more aware. It's like they're born with a computer in their head already. We didn't have computers when I was growing up. It's the divine computer. It's the best, you know, it's where they copied the, <laughs> these little things from. But um, and, and another thing, just to hear you talking on, on along these lines is I don't think the awakening, as we term it, is a, a single event where everybody is like, oh, OK, now we're all awake. Right. And we're on this new timeline. It's happening in, in these little pockets out of phase. And so we are all our own little bubbles of awakening on the planet. And I think our, our task is to hold a very specific frequency and try to maintain it and try to live it every day. And when we talk about bringing in the new earth, there's a lot of things around like, oh yeah, we're gonna have first contact. There's gonna be ships landing in my front yard. They're gonna hand over all the technologies, all of the goods, and then we're gonna get going with this new earth and it's so great and the cabal and all these other things are just gone, wiped out. and. I'm not opposed. I mean, that that sounds lovely, but I think uh, the reality is that the dimensional situation is extremely complicated and we're actually, we're doing really, really, really well right now. And I, you mentioned in one of your videos that we are being cheered on. I feel that is absolute truth that when when you look down on the situation from the perspective of our multidimensional families, 
we are thriving down here. And, and every time we hit one of those speed bumps and we, we purge another layer of density out of our system, we clear it. And in the moment, it feels like it's re-expressing again. You're like, why am I back locked in this old pattern? Why? I feel like I was, I, I moved beyond this. And then all of a sudden you come out the other side of that experience of that unwrapping and you're like, oh, there it is. That's, that's what I, I want to live like. That's what it's supposed to feel like down here. And so the, the process is, it's, you know, you like your connection to angels, like the angelic realms. They're beautiful beyond words. They're amazing. And we're trying to bring them down. We, we, are, we are bringing them down here and anchoring them on the planet. But there's hard work to do in the process. And, you know, you say Ginger's the practical intuitive. It's so true. Like Ginger's always like, you know, put your boots on and do the work. It's hard work. It's not always fun. A lot of it is actually horrific, too, if you're really facing the true depths of the density and the inversion that's been running on the planet. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard for me to face. I've faced whatever my, you know, quotient is, and there are beings who have gone way deeper than me, and it, it goes and goes, you know. And, and yet we keep, we push on through and we keep clearing those layers and we are starting to now, I feel, truly establish these new earth pockets, these communities. Like we feel ours coming online here in Taos. We have an amazing group of beings who are all working around this cleanse process primarily, but we've been visioning into this entire hub where we're going to have facilities for people when they step into this process and they they wake up and they remember who they are and they bring in all of those higher dimensional codes and activations. And then there's a, a literal facility up and running waiting for them to join the team and to bring their ingenuity and their downloads into that new creation sphere. And we're going to be doing this around the entire planet. And we're going to watch before our eyes here in physicality, in a body, as we transform the system from the inside, you know? And it's, I mean, it's miraculous and amazing. And it's credit owed to you guys who have been holding Sorry, you guys, I know it's inverted language, but you beautiful <laughs> ladies and <laughs> beautiful women who have been holding the frequency here and preparing. And, and, you know, at some point, I'm sure I will have children and I want them to have the highest possible frequency available. I want them to step into a complete container of light. I would love for that to be free of distortion so they can come in and translate and they can skip all of these hurdles. But, you know, you guys have been through big falls, big challenges, big purging of, of density and look what it's yielded. I mean, you know, it's still hard for a lot of a lot of people to see, but we are we are there and we did it. And it's an amazing team effort of amazing beings from all over the organic cosmos who have come together and brought Gaia consciousness back to the surface and stepped back into our creation. And it's awesome. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to both of you. It's an honor to be in the presence of such high beings. I mean, truly deep, deep honor. So thank you. Ditto. <laughs> now, I, I think we're really blessed. I, I think, let's see, that's my beloved son calling, but sometimes I say, I'm going to put you on air with me. <laughs> um, you know, we're really blessed because, first of all, the internet brought a huge change of awakening and awareness across the planet. And if they didn't want us to reach new pathways, they would never have given us the internet, which is one way they control us. But in the other way, it is about how we've learned to connect and massive amounts of information have woken people up rapidly. I mean, rapidly. But, you know, we are. This is this is. Chop wood, carry water was what I used to tell people in 2020. Just <laughs> chop wood, carry water. Stop worrying about where we're going. You know, you're stuck in the house. Chop wood, carry water, do your dishes, clean the house. You know, finish all those projects you never finished. You know, reboot yourself. And, and there is a practicality to living here on the planet mm -hmm. and to navigating. And, you know, I, I say that you're a fifth dimensional being in a three dimensional body. And God, everyone wants me today. They, this fifth dimensional being <laughs> in a three dimensional body, meaning that you still need to take care of your body. You still need to, you know, support yourself. You need still need to create that environment. We walk in the physical world, but with a higher consciousness 
that guides our way. We're very blessed because this awakening is happening. That By 2030, there'll be a cosmic awakening, a cosmic event that will, I think, do a mass awakening. Um, but by then we will have, many of us will already been awakening and maybe it's just, you know, I'm not sure what it will look like. I think by then more people will be aware of their gifts and their powers and how to use them and already in contact with their, with their um, galactic family. And so I do see that we're shifting into it, no matter how bad it may look, we're just breaking apart the dark so the light can shine. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, waking up within the planet. I mean, that's what's so cool. You know, from from my process, I met what, what you say, galactic family. We have many, right? If if these old beings who have incarnated through so many systems, galactic families, plural, or you could call it all one. You know, we're all part of the same creation. But um, you know, I've met them in the physical before I knew who they were. You know, beyond if that makes sense. And that's a cool experience, you know, because because what that really means is we're pulling higher dimensional information down into physicality, into physical bodies and and the physical sphere of creation. It, it gets a bad rap in kind of the new age community a little bit like, oh, it's so dense. It's hard down here. We're just trying to move up in frequency where everything's light and beautiful and I sympathize because that's where we all come from. <laughs> we come from these beautiful higher dimensional planes. And and yet it's a gift to be here incarnate in physicality and to experience this density and to to seed our higher dimensional codes in in a body onto the earth and to make it our waking reality is actually a massive triumph, I would say, for, for the universe. For this consciousness, especially when it's been so hijacked and so inverted, and uh, do you do you have anything to add, Ginger, on that wavelength, or I'm just throwing you in? <laughs> uh, no, I mean I think you both have said it beautifully, and that's it is an important piece to bring home to people that, as challenging as it may seem. There is so much good that has already been done and is continually being done. So it's almost like those people that are, again, listening to something like this and are exploring and saying, you know, uh, how can I help? You know, just join the party, you know, hop on board and be a part of it. You already are a part of it. There's no, you know, no one's excluded from this. It's a, it's a good thing if, if you're already listening to things like this, you're already part of it. So just continue to use your resonance. I love the way you put that, Joan, because that really helps to bring it into alignment for people. What do you resonate with? That's where your intuition lies. That's where that gut feeling, that's where that that higher knowing and connecting to your spirit and your soul, which is how you'll find all the other things, your purpose, your contribution, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of good going on right now. Yeah, I think we're truly blessed. We're living in, you know, in amazing times because people are waking up, people are remembering. And so the opportunities are there for each of us to step in and do our part. But remember, you're in the exact place you are supposed to be yeah. at this current moment of time. And if that wall is there, it's because you are now going to learn how to transmute it, transform it, walk around it or dissolve it. But those obstacles you might be feeling, those challenges are really fuel for your, for your growth. They're, they're fuel for you to take charge and move into your next power. But I love how you talk about the star beings, how you saw them physically. And, you know, they are here on the planet. They're walking. Your best friend may, may be a star being and not even know it yet. But more people are waking up to our role in the galaxy and how how connected we really are. I, I, I'm excited about all of this. You know, I'm excited this waking up process. I'm excited to meet others who 
actually see that they're here to wake up people. And, you know, I say, tell everyone that we volunteered here because I, I do believe it. And I, I met one of my clients who was the person on, in charge in these realms that when you wanted to go, you raised, like literally kind of raised your hand and said, I want to go. But you didn't get a free pass just because you wanted to come to Earth. You had to go through intensive screening and training because they didn't want to send you down here unless they were unless there was an assurance that you would make it. So I want to remind everyone that you really already it's known you're going to make it. You're going to do your mission. Yes. They, they would never have allowed you to come down here. Not anyone who's listening to this. And if you were meant to not reach your destiny, if you were going to fail. So remember that. And in the darkest of times, remember what Joan said, I'm going to make it no matter what, because because they carefully screened us. I'm telling you, if they thought you couldn't make it, they wouldn't have allowed you to come back down here. Because, again, I started off by saying it. This is a hard planet. This is a slave enslaved planet. It's, that's not just a thing we say. It is true. You, many of your options were limited. They designed the planet to just change on you. So every lifetime, it was a little bit different. Um, they they ch even changed the timelines. There's a lot of evidence that it's not 2022, whatever what it, we're in, 20,022, it's really 1,022. And that they even changed our history and that they created history. So it would be, you know, the same, we, we hear the same story of the gods all around the planet. They even built the same kinds of pyramids all around the planet. And that, you know, when you stop to think about it, it doesn't make sense. The things they tell us, actually don't make sense. Well, there was no civilization and then the Sumerians popped up. I used to raise my hand. I get a lot of trouble. I go, this doesn't make sense, you know, um, that this happened this way. In, in Hebrew school, we had to study the Bible and, and it was like, well, what do you think of God? Well, I said, I think God is kind of crazy. He's, he's angry. Like in the Bible, he's always angry. He's telling you to smite people. He's going to punish you if you don't bow down to him. And that really made me angry. It was like, this seems confusing to me. And, and I remember reading the Bible. It says, these are the days when the sons of God made it, the, when the sons of God made it with the daughters of man and the giants roamed the earth. So I raised my hand, you know, and, and apparently I was kicked out of many mystery schools. My family was tortured and killed because I did the same thing in the mystery schools because some people are brought in knowing more than the teachers. And it's the authority that's afraid of you. They're afraid of you waking up. The school system was designed to turn you into a good slave who did, you know, earned a living. And if you're listening to this, you're not a slave. You, you've woken up and know that you've woken up despite everything they've done. So even if you're not in the best of places, you should celebrate yourself because you've actually woken up. I had a session with a client today and I said, you realize that, that you're blessed because you actually, we're even having this conversation that despite, despite the challenges to awakening, You've gotten this far. And I want to celebrate all of you for getting this far. Yeah. Despite the fact that the planet is set up against you in that certain level. Now, once you tap into universal consciousness, I want to re actually reaffirm that when you start saying yes, magic, miracles, and synchronicity come back on the higher plane to reinforce that yes, to give to give you what you're asking for, to give you that feedback that yes, your vibration has shifted, your your attracted your your the law of attraction has raised your vibration that you can start attracting good things in your life. But if your vibration's low, you're going to attract the negative. So, but I want to reassure you that when you shift into this consciousness, you will what you ask the universe for will it will provide for you you just want to make sure it's going to provide for you all the blessings of life health wealth happiness joy family people who love you a sense of mission and purpose and a way of doing good on the planet if you ask for those things the universe will send it back to you because you've broken out of that 3d um you know what do they call it? limitation it's a limitation. It's a roadblock. It's designed to make sure you don't get to that next level. Right. Yeah. Of having the goodies here.
It, yeah, it's the inversion, right? It's it's running energy backwards. It's reversed all the circuits. So all of our creation circuit circuits are run in this enslavement programming. All these mental programs trans, translate into our energy body. And then we manifest a reality according to those programs, which create the inverted reality we see in the world, right? And and so we, we reclaim ownership, like what you guys, are, what you beautiful ladies are, are talking about. And then you start to run the circuits in the natural flow again. And it's in the frequency and in alignment of with the creation currents that are here, assisting the planet and assisting all these beings. And And the beauty of the whole process is wherever you are in your own journey, awakening in a physical body here on earth, you are still an anchor point for that entire dimensional map of frequencies that goes way, way, way out deep into the cosmos. And so a lot of, I think it's just like an important thing to remember. It's really helped me is that a lot of the amazing beings on the planet, no matter where they're at, are bringing through their encodements every day out of phase from their waking lives. So whether it's in your dream body or you're just an anchor point for the entire multidimensional being that is like I literally see these beings they're they're working on the entire architecture of the earth right now cleaning things up reorganizing you know it, it's high 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 level it, it stretches our imagination to realize what we are you know and what we're doing collectively but we are literally you know reconfiguring this entire system and we might only remember one little tiny snippet of that. You know, we might wake up and all we do is, you know, make breakfast, do the dishes and, and clean up. And we're like, oh, that wasn't much, you know. <laughs> but meanwhile, you know, there's this massive shift happening that we are all a part of. And the more we remember it, I think the more fun it gets down here to be like, oh, wow, I am a participant in this like entire you know re-engineering of this entire system back into the creation frequencies back into the natural flow the organic timeline um and so like you know as one of the first things you said john like let's have some fun you know like (laughs) looking forward right yes yeah let's have some fun i mean you know we're here to really love life we're really here to live our destiny, our calling. We're not here to have a miserable life, even though it might look like it. You're here to break free of that pattern. You're here to break the pattern of your ancestors. Look, women were slaves for forever. Women were, we, we, we weren't free. We, we were owned by people. You know, that pretty, that pretty much pisses me off too. You know, like this is not the world's best planet in that sense. And, and it's, things have changed, but in your own consciousness, there's so much you can do. There's so much you can do by just understanding you've been programmed to be where you are right now. And that, that you know, you can actually through discernment, through all the things we're talking about, step into your full power. And even overnight, you know, but ask the angels for help. Ask your guides to help. You know, here's the thing. People are so busy that they're too busy to listen to the messages that come through. Okay, when you're just running around, drinking beer, you know, um, playing pool and just watching football games or whatever you're doing that's keeping you stuck, you're too busy to listen to your guides. So they may be going like elbowing you and saying, gosh, that looks like an interesting place. Go over there. But you're not listening. You're not paying attention. It -hmm. takes training to take to pay attention to the messages you're receiving. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they stop giving you so many messages. They go, okay, I'll wait a year, you know. But you're not listening to the signs, and the signs are all around you. Everywhere is a sign, you know, the the music that comes on, the radio, when you've asked a question, where should I go? And it's like you hear a song that says, slow down, you move too fast. It's a message to you. And it's... You can start by saying, okay, what messages am I listening to? And that voice within is very subtle. And and that voice within is waiting for you to say, yes, you know, I'm going to end with this story that I tell that that I heard a voice in 2013. It was a bad year. I had done my taxes and my kids' taxes and the accountant 
fortunately sent them, transmitted them online, but he handed me hard copies. And I was going to the car and I, and I was about to open the trunk and I heard a voice. It said, do not put them in the trunk. And I was like, well, why? And the voice informed me that the trunk would open and they would blow out. Well, I just thought it was my imagination. You know, I have a vivid ima imagination. I'm a Pisces. I said, no, nah, come on. And I got in the car and I drove in LA high, you know, LA traffic. And I had to come to a sudden stop. The trunk flew open. And when I got to a landing spot, all the taxes were gone. And five days later, a public works officer called me to tell me that he had my daughter's tax return. Okay. And, and that voice, because I didn't believe it, because really that's outrageous. And that set me on a path, by the way, of learning. And now I teach intuition because that's the most important thing is to track all the times you said no and the disasters that ensued after. It trains you to listen. You know, so sit down if you're listening to this and say, okay, when did I hear a voice that nudged me not to turn right and, and I turned to right anyway and had an accident or, you know, like what happened when you didn't listen to that nagging feeling that you got? Important lesson. Absolutely. Oh, wow. It sounds like it's been a cool existence, Joan. <laughs> well, it's been a hard existence. I've had hard lessons. You know, I had a... Stubborn personality. I could do it my way. Now, don't tell me what to do. I'd imagine that I, makes I, three I, of us. You know, telling the God, stop telling me what to do. I, I, I'm a <laughs> spiritual rebel. I'm a, yeah. It's my personality not to conform. And yeah. it should be your personalities not to conform, guys, because you're conforming to some book of rules that didn't come from your creation, exactly. that were imposed upon you. And if you can see that, you'll have a great existence. You'll, when you're my age, you'll be sitting back and you'll go, oh my God, I began to listen to myself and listen to that voice and, and trusting the guidance I received in your life changes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, man, we did good. What hour 15, 20 minutes. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it um, me two hours. So I was prepared. Right. <laughs> oh, I could keep I going. I just worry. Conversation. Yeah. Ginger, I love the work you're doing. I think you're really helping a lot of people, as I said, in that pragmatic, intuitive way to, to not have them lose hope and to believe in themselves and to really see their potential. And Zane, you're just, you rock, you know, like the wisdom you carry, the light code you're carrying, the star of a seed that you are and that you're embracing is going to heal the planet. It's going to create opportunities in your communities for people to gather and to learn and to grow and to grow their own food and make their own water and power. Everything is going to be coming from work like you're doing. Well, thank you. He's Joe. amazing. Yeah. Zane's oh amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't believe what a what a help uh, Ginger, especially, is really. I feel like part of your mission is working with the younger generations and bringing them, showing them their power, and and giving that constant, um, you know, reinforcement and support, and seeing the the bigger vision. You know, as we catch these little speed bumps, and so I I want to thank you, Ginger, and. And I want to thank you, Joan, yes, for Joan. so many decades of hard, beautiful work and for bringing us here to this point. It's really amazing and exciting. So thank you so much. You know what's funny? I'm so honored to be here. When we got on and I realized it was a podcast, I was sad because I really wanted to look at you guys. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, I wish we were on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And here we are on Zoom and just that little thing. It was my intention to see you. <laughs> I wanted to know what you looked like. I, I, I'm a visual person and ginger, you know, not a voice. And so I that's an example. You know, maybe I created us on Zoom today. Probably your next show you do is going to work perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were, you, were, <laughs> you were behind that little that little technical hiccup, huh? <laughs> your higher so self. Guys, Perfect. You can yeah. reach me at joanofangels.com. Everything's okay, Joan of Angels. I'm the only Joan of Angels, except now there's a 
person on Instagram who's calling herself Joan of Angels, but I'm not an astrologer. So okay. that's how you'll know. I don't I don't send you a note that says I'll do readings for you. Okay. And and what's the best place to find uh, recordings like this? I do have a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, Joan of Angels. Mm-hmm. I have an Instagram page, Joan of Angels. I have my website, Joan of Angels. Um, yeah, Joan of Angels. Amazing. Excellent. <laughs> well, that keeps it simple. Yeah. Yeah, well, very, very awesome speaking with you today, and we're we're super excited. This is a fairly new initiative, our you know new octave rising, and um, I love it. I love it. I hear the sound of the music you're playing. I hear the songs you. that you, you know the so songs much. of the divine coming right through you, and I feel blessed. Thank you wow. so much. We we do too. <laughs> All right, bye okay. for now. A pleasure. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been Thank so you. fun. Such a job.